Want to start? No, let's start. Hey, you guys know me. I'm Paul Borg, and this is my capstone presentation. I'm, wor I'm working on behalf of Mark Gondry and Zach Peterson of the Naval Postgraduate School, and my advisor is Dr. Young Jun Yoon. So the problem is the lack of education. You really don't like get any computer science related stuff until college. Everyone else just you just start at college, there's no programming knowledge whatsoever. So there's nothing leading into it. There's everything is self-taught at that point. So and the other major problem is that there's nothing really being taught about dangers of the internet, of hacking and all that sort. The solution is Doxed. Doxed is actually originally a board game made by Mark Gondry and uh, Zach Peterson over at MPS, and it's been around for a while, but it hasn't been implemented. It's available for release, but it hasn't been published really through any stores, not released there. And so my job is to make a digital version of this game to make it more accessible and being used by uh, the intended market, which is teenagers. So it basically solves all the problems that were released before and reveals the dangers of what could happen. Next slide. The game itself is a cooperative based game uh, designed for network infiltration and your job is to retrieve your digital assets which were stolen from you before the administrators catch you. So game, uh, the interface to the game itself, the virtual version, is that there are no keys for it, it's all GUI, which means that it's all the user, user interface on screen, which means it's easily ported to iOS, Android, or anything else with just a touch screen. So everything's visible from the get-go, you don't have to go through any back menus, and you can see everything you want to see. So the premise of the game, what it is, it's you're about to get doxxed, which means that they're going to take your authentication credentials, your financial data, your intellectual property, and your personal identifiable information, everything you own, everything that's entitled to you as a person, not just your money, and they're going to post it on the internet so anyone can take it. So you're a hacker, so you're just going to break into their network and take everything back before they can, and then you're going to escape before they notice you. So. You pick up your digital assets, the ones I described a moment ago, your authentication credentials like your passwords, your financial data, which all business students work with, the intellectual property, your music, your movies, your art, anything that you would make, and your personal identifiable information, which is your medical records and anything that would, it would take to make a fake ID. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a, a game, the game while it's running. So this is your default screen, just our opening credits. And here we have your basic setup. You can add players, you can make them uh, AI driven, you can change their roles between uh, the, the six available as, uh, characters, and you can, which will all have individual special abilities and boosts and all sorts of things. Ones can move twice for a single move, some can move anywhere, and all that jazz. So I'm going to load from an existing uh, network that I already set up so that we don't have to build a board. You can see uh, just how they look from here. So I'm going to go with the diamond, which was standard across uh, all the samples for the game. So you can see here, you've got all your pieces. You've got your uh, sales database, all the components of a network just simulated in a game. Now, for game purposes, I can redistribute the uh, tiles and change it to whatever I want. Well, I don't like this. You can see the start points for all the, for all the players. I don't like how that player starts, so I'm going to redistribute. Now, we didn't set this up so that you could just change them all individually because we wanted it to still be somewhat random so that it wasn't all flat out planned. 
So let's go ahead and get it started. Now here you can see what player started with, and this is actually very unusual if they started with two of the same kind. But I'll go with player one since he has two intellectual properties, and I think I'll go ahead and get that over to player four. So player one, the social engineer, has the special ability of moving to any place that was already compromised in the network. So I'm going to move over to player four spot. I'm going to open up the loop manager. Now, in the original game, there were seven actions available. I decided to break them down into four. So you can trade, you can give, you can take, you can drop, you can pick up. And I decided to put them all into one. So I'm going to go ahead and give this player my two pieces, since I can't just take one from them. I'll just set up, I'll just give them over to them. Now, this is kind of a faulty projector, but uh, if you notice that the uh, player four is actually in a red color, and I added this so that the cards would change to uh, red so you know where they were going, where it changes, such as here, where it would be white if it's dropping to the tile instead of trading with the player. So I'll give those over to them. Now since I have no actions left, I will go in in my turn. So I'm drawing an intellectual property and a zero-day exploit. Now a zero-day exploit is something that the network administrators have never seen before. So they have no way to counter it. So this is your way of doing special abilities and preventing them from fixing all the pieces that you broke. Now you see right now there's kind of a purple animation over a firewall. So the network administrators randomly pick certain spots of the network that they're going to fix up, they're going to patch, they're constantly monitoring that. So if that was a compromised spot, then it would be restored unless I chose to counter it. And if a player was on that spot, then that whole uh, tile would be decommissioned. They would take down that piece of the network so that it would limit our movements. So they're also patching the internet gateway. And you'll see that will flip over in a second unless I decide I don't want to. Okay. This player is the war driver. Now he has the special ability to trade with anyone across the network. I'm going to see, okay, nobody actually has any authentication credentials, so I'm just going to compromise and move to the nearest player, just so I can get where somewhere is more useful. Now this is the Infocon level. When that reaches the very end, players lose because they're going to recognize, oh, there's something going on in the network, things are starting to break, you should probably just take down this network and then you'll be done, they're going to post to the internet and you won't have access to anything anymore. Okay, now that was actually an AI player's turn, they can move almost instantly. They did all their calculations and just decided there wasn't much left to do, so they might have done a couple trades before they actually just decided to compromise uh, the existing nodes around it so that they can be moved to. So let's check to see what this player has. He has three intellectual property. So I will trade a format string, a zero-day exploit for an intellectual property. Now that he has four, of the same share, he can go to that spot and take back that piece. So let's see. The nearest intellectual property spot will be up here. And I have no available moves left, so I'll go and my turn. So in this place, you'll see that it's going to be patched, so that's going to be removed. And you guys have all seen this before. And you get kind of the gist. As it goes on, players uh, pick up the other pieces. They pick up the four uh, assets involved in the game. And they eventually go back to the internet gateway to escape the network before they're noticed. So I chose Unity, which is a common web platform. It's built to be used by almost anyone. It's a free license to anyone who doesn't make a hundred grand in a year. 
and it can be deployed to web, iOS, Android, all these platforms. And the client themselves didn't have a, didn't decide what they wanted to deploy this on, so it was an easy solution. Plus, I already had experience in it, so it made it a natural choice. And so now what? We've got, um, this is going to be expanded upon. There were a couple modes that were, we didn't have time to get to. Originally, the client just pitched to have all just the corner concepts of the game built in a digital format. And I finished that in a month, so I decided I was going to build on top of that, but then I shot too high, and I wasn't able to reach the in the dark mode, which is anything that is not compromised, you cannot tell what the node is, which makes it harder to get to where you need to turn in. There's a larger version with 48 tiles, which kind of breaks up the naming conventions because every one of these objects has a unique name, and when you say, okay, let's patch this one, and there's two of the same name, it causes problems. The client also mentioned an integrated hint system, so you can tell what the AI is doing and use their knowledge to say what you're going to do. Also, since I'm not a CD student, you have all the basic uh, button aspects. They're just clear, they're simple, there's no specialization for the project itself. And the client is going to deploy, deploy this to web as well as uh, iOS. Thank you guys for coming, and are there any questions?